Assalamu alaikum. A very good afternoon, distinguished guest, and I'm delighted to welcome all of you to this very special roundtable discussion on angel investment in Bangladesh, where for what? Organized by Jafodil International University and Venture Capital and Private Equity Association of Bangladesh. Now, I welcome you all to watch a short video of Honorable Chairman of WBF, Mr. Bivers Alduntas. Partnership for Financial Inclusion, GPFI, chaired by the Queen Maxim of the Netherlands. He is also the co-chair of Washington DC-based Global Business Angels Network, GBAN, Vice President of the Brussels-based European Trade Association for Business Angels, IBAN. He is also the President of the Business Angels Association of Turkey, which is the World Entrepreneurship Forum Ambassador to Turkey and the Balkan countries. Moreover, he is the President of Ducom International Inc. star of the Turkey version of the television show Dragon's Den. Before starting his journey at WBAF, he was the former senior advisor of the London Stock Exchange Group for the Elite Program. For his outstanding contribution, he was awarded five times as Best Individual in Europe for engaging with the global entrepreneurship ecosystem by European Trade Association of Business Angels, IBAN. He is the only entrepreneur to be granted a personal audience with former President Barack Obama at the Presidential Summit on Entrepreneurship in Washington, D.C. Appointed as JCI Ambassador following Ban Ki-moon, former Secretary General of the United Nations, he was profiled regularly by leading international media such as CNN International, Bloomberg, BBC. He is the author of Off the Bus into a Supercar, published by Balboa Press and translated into four different languages. He is also a co-author of Planet Entrepreneur, the World Entrepreneurship Forum's Guide to Business Success Around the World, published by Willy. It is such a pleasure to welcome Mr. Bayer Saltuntas at Daffodil International University in Bangladesh. I must thanks to our chief guest, Mr. Sirazul Islam, Executive Chairman of Bangladesh Investment Development Authority. Uh, we really welcome you in two reasons. One is, as I understood, you just newly take the responsibility so we, uh, we are really welcome you as BIDA and also in Daffod University and of course as one of your component is to bring the investment I am sure that this is the one of the right forum that where we should get a lot of indication that how you should also work precisely. And definitely welcome Mr. Bhaivar Saltuntas for visiting Bangladesh, not Daffod I should say for visiting Bangladesh if I am not wrong this is your first visit to Bangladesh. So I hope that as you know that the Bangladesh government is also emphasizing a lot to create startup and entrepreneur ecosystem. I hope that you will love to work with Bangladesh because you will get plenty of young people that what exactly you target people also. And again, Mr. Shami Mahasan, as uh, your introduction, the, uh, our MC forget, uh, you are, uh, Mr. Shami Mahasan is the president of Bangladesh Venture Capital Association, which we call the BCPAV. So he is the uh, president of the Venture Capital Association. At the same time, his company is E-Generation, and he was also the former uh, president of Bangladesh Software Association. So thank you, Shamim, for joining with us. And definitely, Shwakot Bhai, Marub Bhai, and all of other stakeholders, our honorable vice chancellor, pro vice chancellor, register, and other distinguished guests, thank you very much for joining this discussion, because uh, we understood the, uh, as waivers and of course the venture capital stakeholder, they are the right people. So already there is a lot of description is written that the World Business Angel Forum, but I thought that it will be better to say by waivers himself because uh, he already uh, delivered his uh, position and, and other, other key factor. So uh, just a brief one thing that World Business Angel Forum is uh, one of the partner, affiliated partner of G20. And you know the G20 is now playing the key role to the whole worldwide economical development. So definitely, and also this uh, financial inclusion, these two of the partnership, I think this is one of the key factor for worldwide, you know, the World Bank, even the Bangladesh, Bangladesh government is also always very much focused for the G20 and also the financial inclusion. So I'm sure that uh, these two partnerships will giving him the more uh, strength to contribute to this, uh, his journey. And at the same time, 
if I'm not wrong, he has uh, networking almost very close to 70 country. Very close to 70 country, he has his own high commissioner, senator, and he has unbelievable network he double up. And definitely already you saw his presentation, his dynamism or his leadership already bring him in the extra height of this forum. And I'm also lucky enough because uh, he also uh, elected or selected whatever I should say that in Bangladesh to look after the World Business Angel Investment Forum. So with these few words, uh, I, I think that it is uh, now best uh, to come to the waivers so that the, he should give uh, his uh, uh, presentation or discussion so that the, we can discuss and definitely in conclusion, if there is any more point, I'm sure that he will come again. So I just uh, love to give the, my microphone to Bivers. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Sabur. Uh, as a matter of fact, I am here thanks to G20 meetings because first we met was in Berlin in the GPFI uh, commission of G20, I think, isn't it? When Germany was the president of G20. And uh, by time, uh, he brought Bangladesh to the scope of not only G20, but also early stage equity markets. Invention in 1950s, 60s was very important, but today innovation is more important than invention uh, because if the product you bring to the market doesn't sell, then it means it is not, you are not able to create new jobs, new wealth and social justice for, for your economy. So, uh, and 30 years ago, 40 years ago, customer and user uh, was ready to consume anything invented. But today, this is not the case. You have to find something innovative and also compatible with the pocket of the consumer. And it will really create an extra value for the customer. It will ease his life uh, to live in this, in this earth uh, in a more comfortable uh, the, the standard. So who is going to convert invention to innovation? Entrepreneurs. But entrepreneurs of today uh, have a big challenge, access to finance. So finance is the main uh, challenge of entrepreneurs of today. Uh, there are different sources of finances available in the, in the world uh, today for, for uh, entrepreneurs. ICOs, bootstrappers, families, friends, banks, co-investment funds, family offices, uh, wealth management institutions, angel investors, crowdfunding uh, platforms, government grants. There are many, so IPO, but one of them is different than others, angel investors. Why? Because they are putting their uh, finance uh, and their know-how, networking and mentorship in businesses they invest. Uh, in uh, last year, uh, in Europe, 320,000 angel investors invested 9.6 billion euro in startups. And this is 26 billion dollars in the United States uh, through 340,000 angel investors. The total market size is around 50 billion uh, dollars. So uh, when we brought these figures to the attention of G20 administration, uh, of course, they were very interested in discovering a new area uh, to support and uh, bring to the attention of policymakers to boost economies through innovation, entrepreneurship, startups, and angel investment. So uh, WBAF became the eighth global partner of uh, G20 after OECD. And now we are advocating the importance of uh, angel investment not only as a tool of supporting uh, startups, but also as a tool supporting the FDI, foreign direct investment ecosystem of economies. Unfortunately, foreign direct investment in the world uh, in the last three and four years uh, is decreasing. But angel investment size is increasing. So uh, WBAF's World Congress um, administration team decided to put an FDI stage uh, next year in our Congress to understand how startup and FDI ecosystems, innovation agencies, in investment promotion agencies, regional development agencies, economic development boards can cooperate 
to benefit uh, from this uh, increasing, increasing economy, which is we are calling startup economy. As a matter of fact, uh, governments of today are very intelligent because they are supporting innovation. Because innovation is bringing new jobs, innovation is bringing new uh, wealth uh, for people, also uh, uh, social justice. On the other hand, of course, angel investment is very important for Islamic economies too. Uh, we signed uh, last week uh, an agreement with the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce, where uh, dear uh, Saburhan was uh, also in Bahrain and uh, witnessed our uh, ceremony. Uh, we are now bringing uh, angel investment as an Islamic uh, financial tool to the attention of Islamic uh, economies, because uh, angel investment is 100% compatible with Islamic mindset. There is no interest. Uh, you, you are taking risk with the startup, you are putting more than finance, you are sharing your know-how, mentorship and networking. Unfortunately, for example, we are able to say there are 340,000 angel investors in the United States, 320,000 in Europe, but we don't have any statistics for the uh, Islamic uh, economies, unfortunately. I think uh, WBAF, uh, as an affiliated partner of G20, uh, will uh, play an important role to connect the local entrepreneurs and FDI ecosystem with the global investors. Thank you so much uh, to Mr. Chairman uh, for honoring us uh, today. And this is also showing Bangladesh government's engagement, keenness uh, to engage uh, with uh, uh, new developments in the global investment markets. And uh, I am thanking you so much for uh, joining us uh, today. I am sure uh, we are very well placed to make a very positive change in the world economy if we uh, make good cooperations together. Uh, I think the day after on 23rd of November we are going to sign an agreement uh, with the Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and uh, this is also showing an interest uh, of the private industry to engage uh, with uh, the global investment uh, markets. Thanks so much again. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. For Bangladesh, actually, this venture capital, what uh, Suburbai told, venture capital and angel investment, this is new phenom phenomenon. But uh, I, uh, I have been in this is space for last seven years. In our country, actually, there is angel, angel network recently has been formed, where actually Niger is there. That is, uh, that is one of the network they established. We have to learn from you that actually we need connection because it's a global village. Some of the entrepreneurs who are doing good, they can take actually, uh, they can actually, uh, they can become the global player. So they can draw the uh, fund from outside they are actually, they can operate globally. Everybody is talking about the importance of en uh, ent uh, education for entrepreneurs. But generally in the world, uh, dear chairman, nobody is talking about the importance of education for investors. Uh, what we have discovered uh, after traveling around the world, uh, I saw that there is a great demand to educate investors. How to make term sheet, how to make, uh, develop the company valuations, et cetera, et cetera. Then I understood that in order to boost this angel investment uh, ecosystem in the world, we have to connect the local investors with uh, qualified uh, investors. Because these investors need networking, mentorship, and know-how to, to make exit in the future. If they don't have a connection in Silicon Valley, it is very difficult to make an exit in the future because unfortunately, uh, Silicon Valley is the, seems like the only address nowadays uh, for successful exits. Uh, why angel investors are putting money? They are not donating money, they are investing with an expectation of return of investment. If there is no exit, this money will not come back. This means five years later, we cannot invite again investors to put money. Some of them should have a good return of uh, investment. OECD statistics show that 1.2% of entrepreneurs are able to reach investor finance. And one entrepreneur in every 10 entrepreneurs who reach finance is able to create a success uh, story. So uh, Bangladesh uh, is a big country, 
180 million people. This means it can easily, as a matter of fact, uh, develop an exit strategy within the market. If the government, for example, develops some incentives for global investors, then they can attract the finance of them. And the real incentive uh, is, as a matter of fact, to connect them with local uh, Bangladesh investors, and they will learn by time how to make good investment and how to make uh, exits. So stock exchanges uh, can play a, a very important role. And uh, Chamber of Commerce can uh, play an Im important role. Investment promotion agencies can play an important uh, role. Uh, because uh, which can, uh, whoever makes it first uh, will have a great advantage. Because, for example, London Stock Exchange and NASDAQ now opened their entrepreneurship center. London Stock Exchange brought an elite program to attract, to connect uh, SMEs uh, with uh, investors. Uh, you know, after the economic crisis, uh, global economic crisis, uh, stock exchange started to lose money because uh, they are not able to find good companies to make IPO. And if there is no IPO, stock exchange cannot make money. So now they see startup economy as a good compensation. And uh, they are trying to understand how they can benefit from startup uh, economy. But 20 years ago, the doors of stock exchange were closed to entrepreneurs. It was only for big companies. But now they are opening the doors to entrepreneurs because they see that they are creating new businesses. And in the future, if they support now, in the future, they will be the customer of the stock exchange when it is time to make an IPO. Uh, so I'm really inviting uh, the policymakers of uh, Bangladesh to consider uh, how they can create an exit strategy within the market so a British investor from London will prefer investing in a startup in Bangladesh instead of making an investment in London. Because uh, things in Europe are uh, going uh, very uh, difficult and uh, countries who understand the uh, importance of this exit uh, mechanism uh, will uh, really be attractive uh, countries to invest. Angel investors should come to Bangladesh to see the merit, to see the innovation and creativity of Bangladeshi young people. And the government is also focusing and, and that's keeping in mind uh, we at Defoe University we also initiated six years back first department of innovation and entrepreneurship department. And as I understood because you also set up a one academy, WBF Academy, our entrepreneurship department is working with the Kaufman Foundation. So maybe our department head is here I think WBF uh, Academy also can be a part of our department activities. Maybe students can get the WBF Academy course in your department, so you should give them the proper credit and students can also fly to Istanbul or set up the WBF Academy inside your department. Maybe you can talk because after uh, Shaukut Bhai discussion, it came to my mind that education transformation need to be involved. Because without education, because as he already mentioned that few years back the presentation, present present is far different. So if the education system is uh, transformed and involved, I think that should be giving the proper direction. So next, anyone please. Thank you very much, sir. I'm Kemasan Ripon and I am here on behalf of Bangladesh Skills Development Institute. And we are working in Bangladesh since 2003 and probably one of the pioneer institutes, especially for both hard and soft skills in Bangladesh. We have youth and they have ideas. And uh, with the enormous level of campaign awareness, now our youth are able to generate ideas for their own venture. And the angel investment, I would say it's a new term, especially for our youth. And also somehow I feel like uh, angels in Bangladesh, they actually act like an angel, like they are not uh, they are untouchable, even we 
don't feel their existence because they're angel. So what do you think? Like we have um, retired military officers, we have retired government officials. They can be as our angel invest, uh, investors. So do you think that we need uh, sort of awareness or uh, training? Because you have mentioned like angels are not here to invest the finance only, but they can also invest their time. They can also invest their knowledge so that they can take the idea to a certain level. So that's a question for you. Seven years ago, Turkey, my country, Turkey, um, was at the uh, 47th uh, level of 52 countries in Europe for angel investments. Then, uh, Deputy Prime Minister uh, understood the importance of this. I visited him, and we released the angel love in Turkey to create awareness about angel investments, angel law. And Treasury Department started recognizing qualified angel investors. Around 500 uh, people recognized, and they listed. And last year, and 75% tax incentive came. Uh, if you put $100,000 to one uh, startup, you are able to deduct uh, $75,000 from your personal income tax, not uh, uh, company uh, tax, but personal income tax. And this 75% is the highest amount in the world. And then UK is coming 30%, then Portugal is coming 25%. What happened when government brought this law, media started talking about angel investment very much. And entrepreneurs started to look for the qualified angel investors from internet who were recognized by the treasury department, etc. Seven years ago, it was uh, in the uh, 47th uh, uh, level. Last year, Turkey became the fifth biggest angel market of Europe. 512 million euro invested in uh, startups. 512 million euro. Uh, you can check eban.org and download the reports of all countries, see what uh, happened. Uh, I think in a very short period of time, uh, in five years of time, we could achieve it. And we are showing this as a sample to many uh, countries. On the other hand, Estonia is a very small country, uh, two, million, two million population. But Estonia became the uh, most startup uh, country of Europe, uh, and they were recognized and awarded, etc., because uh, Estonia is coming immediately after Turkey. Turkey is 8 million, Estonia is 2 million. But why I am giving these samples? Mindset is very important. It is not important how big the country is. As a <laughs> it is important how the people are engaged personally uh, with this. I will present uh, this report to Mr. Chairman uh, at the end of this um, uh, forum, but I want to show you a photograph. Uh, uh, it is, it is uh, here. Maybe you know the president, the president of Croatia. Uh, last year, uh, she joined uh, to our Congress. Why I am showing this uh, picture? Croatia is a 3.5 million uh, populated country, very small. Dhaka is 30 million. The response to K. M. Hassan report, it came to my mind that our Honorable Bida Chairman, I think maybe you can take this initiative because as you know, the Bangladesh has plenty of money because Bangladesh has unbelievable rich people. Their number of rich people is not less than 20 million. And few of me, few million people do not know how they should invest this money. That's why they transfer this money to abroad. I'm so sorry, though I should not tell this one, but this is true. And Bangladeshi people is the uh, second largest in the Dubai real estate buying, second largest in the Malaysia, second largest in the Singapore, and even your country also. In Turkey. Yeah. In Turkey also. So, but anyway. So, but I think that if you can also help BIDA and with the help of Venture Capital Association, because as we understood, government is also trying to hard to bring the attraction of the foreign direct investment. But if Bangladeshi people is already putting their money to the Bangladesh, to this young startup, I think they have plenty of money. So, but this is true, as Ripon is rightly, K.M. Hassan is mentioned, 
the proper direction, proper guideline, proper formula, I think needs someone. But I hope that uh, your, with your organization, if you help BIDA and Venture Capital Association, and from our university, we are already in the step. I had in mind that I'm going there to learn uh, something new. In fact, I was called back to serve the nation again just uh, two months back. And, and, and this is a very new era for me. This is a very new area. Uh, I, I, as I told you that I had never been engaged in business and the portfolio that um, uh, in fact I was put in during my service career, it is not really related to business. Uh, I worked in the uh, field administration, then I uh, worked in the election commission secretariat, I worked in Ministry of Education, Ministry of Public Administration, and then ultimately in the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So uh, there was, uh, in fact, very little scope to know about the nitty-gritty of investment or business. But when I, I am here as executive chairman of BIDA and I'm uh, uh, acquainting myself uh, with many of the business terminologies. And you know, the business is something, uh, a living uh, discipline. It's, it's not a static one. I am a student of business because I did my MBA back in uh, 1996. So, uh, I believe that many of the concept has already been changed. New concepts are coming up. This angel investment, uh, you are right. Uh, so, so far, I uh, just heard from Mr. Babas and uh, also some of the uh, um, discussant. This angel investment is something that uh, it is a little different from uh, the uh, popular um, financing, say for, uh, from the bank or uh, from the capital market, or even it's different from the venture capital. So it's a new idea. As Mr. Sabur Khan uh, mentioned that, yes, we have many rich men uh, in our country. Well, um, perhaps this statement is true but we have to tap these uh, resources. And for tapping these resources, we need to know the, uh, uh, in fact, strategy. How to tap it, how, how to bring this money to the market. That's uh, really uh, important. Because the very idea of angel investment, as it is new, the business people must know first, uh, what is the nature of this uh, investment? how it works, and uh, how uh, the so-called rich people can be uh, make uh, interested to invest in the uh, startup business. Yes, Bangladesh is a very fertile land now for startups. There are young people, they are uh, coming up in business instead of going to the uh, job market. Government is also, uh, uh, very keen, and government is giving a uh, uh, sort of uh, incentive to them that you better come to the business, become an entrepreneur yourself, don't go for service. Uh, but thank you very much, Mr. Babers, that this angel investment can be one of them. My background is basically stock exchange. I, I uh, worked for Chittagong Stock Exchange and I helped them automate it. Uh, some, uh, I was there for some 12 years, and now I'm a venture capitalist. I'm not an angel. Uh, I just, uh, well, just look uh, at the angels. When are they preparing few companies uh, with some traction and sending us to us? So that's how angel investment is very, very important for us. We are trying to raise fund at the moment, very busy raising fund. But at the same time, our challenge, what I foresee, is getting the projects. And as you have mentioned, uh, just I'm repeating that, uh, not only money, but what we said that uh, we like to give away something to them, money plus a lot of things. Uh, 
I just uh, noted a few points uh, as we're talking. It may not be uh, a logical follow through. But let me first tell you about the Bangladesh Securities and Exchange Commission rules. So I've been working with them for a long time. Uh, the governance issue. Bangladesh Securities and Exchange Commission uh, came up with the alternative investment rules in 2015 only, not very far away. Although Chair, um, Honorable Chairman of BIDA, he said that uh, it is new to him. Actually, sir, this, the whole very idea is new to all of us. It's not you, sir. Uh, so after uh, establishing this alternative investment fund, uh, after the angel stage, angel is very important, of course, uh, we have got the mandate as asset management, uh, as, as alternative investment, three types of funds, and venture capital, private equity, and impact fund. So just uh, before the, this meeting, we were talking about the impact funds. Uh, two weeks ago, we received another, another uh, incentive from the government that uh, there won't be any uh, stamp duty. It's subject to a uh, stamp duty, uh, which would be given upfront. That has been uh, withdrawn, this nominal 5,000 uh, taka minimum. 40 million people? Not many countries in the world uh, have got this population. So we have got a nation of new generation, very young blood. So they need angels. And we venture capitalists are waiting for, uh, for them to prepare to come to us and get proper funding. Stock exchange, what they have done, or they are doing it after a BSSC regulation, you're talking about the IPOs, you're talking about the exit route, uh, a new board has been formed in the stock exchange. It's yet to be operational, but uh, infrastructure is already there. That uh, small companies, as small as half a million dollar, a company with paid up capital, half million dollar can list there. It's a separate board, and the listing regulation is pretty relaxed. So when the angels come, angels are not coming uh, as, uh, for charity, of course. That, that should be also be uh, uh, remembered. That angels are coming uh, with their angel attitude, but at the end of the day, they will also receive, uh, receive money and get a decent exit. So these things are already there. The entrepreneurs can buy back. There are third party, second party uh, uh, buying, or this, this uh, new board at the stock exchange is wonderful. It will, it will create a big impact. And talking about the international investment, uh, as you said, that uh, perhaps we could go to cross-border investment. I tell you, uh, I represent uh, my company, Maslin Capital. Uh, in the uh, last six months' time, uh, we received uh, at least 13 uh, international investors, and nine of them were uninvited. I never met them. As I'm talking about the international investors that are coming at the same time, I received at least three calls in the last one week, I tell you. One is from Kenya. Do you like to, from Bangladesh, do you like to invest in Kenya? Uh, another call from Nepal, and another, another gentleman visited us from South Africa because they, they see the growth of GDP. Tremendous, tremendous growth. So there are wealth in this country already created. Now, this is uh, maybe early or maybe late, I don't know, but we, we should look at outside for investment also. We need to attract international investors, but at the same time, Bangladesh is pretty capable, pretty capable to go out and invest. Although my current uh, challenge is to raise funds uh, from the local community and to make them understand as a side that uh, what is venture capital, what is angel. We are working. The VCPAB is a newly formed organization. Uh, and talking about, uh, I'll finish with this uh, personal thing of Mr. Bayer, but I have, uh, actually I met him first time a couple of years ago in Tehran. And I asked myself, myself that this gentleman, what is doing here? I all I have been following him for, uh, since then. Uh, every week he is uh, uh, in some country, Croatia or Nigeria or even United States. So I was not sure which country he was from. And I then I concluded that he must be from from the sky. I mean, he must be flying all the time. So it's a wonderful network you have, and perhaps we can uh, have some uh, assistance from you. What we need the network and when we're talking about the money plus we need some strategic partnership with others two days ago uh, bangladesh bangladesh is an investment destination and i don't know if this team is your from your uh, team but 
Is, is it yeah, another? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bangladesh is uh, very visible. <laughs> I mean, uh, even in Mo uh, Monte Carlo in this, in this uh, Congress, but it was the Congress of World Free Trade Associations, Economic Zones uh, Association. I was a speaker there because we made an agreement with World Economic Zones to create startup zones within zones to create some opportunities for startups and to connect them with the uh, important export uh, agencies, etc. So um, after uh, these, uh, your talks and uh, their uh, Sabur's uh, talks, I, I want to declare that WBAF is very ready. Uh, we have eight country offices in eight different uh, countries. The first one was established in Croatia. The economy ministry hosts uh, the uh, country office, and this is this is a small castle they dedicated for this for WBF country office, and uh, they are making now today a global fundraising stage competition in in Croatia. Uh, we have office in Ghana. The development ministry of Ghana is hosting it within the ministry, and the uh, WBF Ghana chairman is the development minister of of uh, Ghana. We have in Bangkok. NSTDA, the National Science and Technology Development Agency, uh, is uh, hosting it. 3,000 people are working in this NSTDA. We have in Georgia, the Georgia Investment Promotion Agency is hosting it. So I am very ready to uh, cooperate uh, if uh, your uh, agency uh, is interested in hosting uh, the WBF country office within Bangladesh, the ninth country office in the world, and I'm sure uh, Saburhan is going to also uh, support this uh, the movement and in cooperation because we have a great high commissioner here and there is a great network and there is a great interest from the government side uh, to understand what is happening in this, in this uh, eco ecosystem. Uh, I will be um, uh, very pleased to give such kind of a uh, contribution uh, if uh, Chairman Islam says yes, we are in and let's proceed about opening a country office in uh, Bangladesh. I think there's a tremendous amount of opportunity in, in co-investment between local investors and international investors. Uh, so for example, you know, we've done three deals so far. One of the deals, uh, it's quite well known, it's an automotive services platform. They've been growing at 30% month over month. But the way we did it was that when we came in, you know, our angels put in about $100,000, uh, but then that gave the confidence for them to then raise money in Singapore. So they were able to raise close to $300,000 now uh, from angel investors, accelerators in Singapore. They're now on, a, at a, on, a, on their way to raising a, a Series A round at about 3x the valuation that we invested in. So our angels are quite happy. But obviously, you know, for international investors, the biggest questions they have, you know, they might be, uh, they might like Bangladesh at a surface level. All the different statistics has been mentioned before. They might see that there's a lot of wealth being generated in Bangladesh, but then they have questions about how do I put my money in? Um, how do I make sure that I can get it out? And I think having local investors who can vouch for a startup with the experience base, uh, with a certain level of knowledge, I think is quite ideal. And so that's something we're pursuing and we're keen to pursue with organizations like WBAF as well as Daffodil University to make sure more of that happens. My question is to you is, uh, what are the success rate globally or country countrywide, where the angel investment is becoming popular? So what is the success rate of the angel investment return? This is one. And number two is, if this is, uh, can be the institutionalized in Bangladesh, I think Bangladesh should be the, one of the best fertile land to grow angel investment. In startup ecosystem is around 20 multiplier. So when you multiply it with, in the next five to seven years, the ideal. But of course, after the uh, global economic crisis, it is now we are talking about eight to 10 years. But five years is also uh, happening. Uh, five years exit with two, uh, 20 multipliers. This means we are talking about when you multiply 50 with 20, one trillion uh, the dollar uh, exit in the next five to seven years. The question is how much percent of, Bangla uh, of this uh, one trillion dollar is coming to Bangladesh? This is, the, this is the main question. Every, every country is asking this question now. Uh, what like a piece of cake we are going to have from this exit in the next five to 10 years, uh, let's say. Because uh, 
uh, this startup uh, investment is not like others. Other investments, you are putting money here, you are making the bridge, you see what is happening. And generally, real estate is the uh, main locomotive uh, of this uh, SME uh, industry uh, market. Startup ecosystem, you are starting today, and the fruits are coming uh, five years later, eight years later, ten years later. So this is, this is the dynamic of, uh, uh, of the ecosystem. Uh, secondly, how can, for example, Bangladesh increase the speed of getting more fruits back? This is another question, isn't it? Okay, getting fruits is good, but in a faster time, how, how can we do it? Uh, policy makers, uh, dear um, MD Islam, is uh, very important uh, to make it faster. The Venture Capital and Pivotary Association, we have more than uh, around 16 member companies right now. And again, Sobur Khan Bhai is one of our founding members and he was there when we had our first meeting at a hotel in uh, Gulshan, an executive in hotel. And um, since then we have come a long way. Uh, our member companies have invested more than $300 million in last uh, three years. Of course, they uh, significant came from um, Brahmar and Partners, but uh, others have al also contributed in these uh, investments. And we also had few exits. Uh, BD Venture, founded by uh, Shaukot Bhai, had one very successful uh, exits where the LPs made uh, good returns. And few other exits uh, came from, uh, is, is, is on the process through IPO by Brahmar and a uh, few other uh, VCs. And uh, through VCPA and BASIS, we have been working very closely with government of Bangladesh, the Prime Minister's Office, uh, ICT Ministry, Finance Ministry, and BIDA. We have been uh, worked very closely with Securities and Exchange Commission to formulate the alternative investment rules. This proposal actually came from uh, the BASIS and VCPA uh, community. And the second proposal came from us was to create the small cap board in Dhaka Stock Exchange. And, and uh, finally, it has been uh, started recently. Uh, they are taking applications from startups and we will be seeing uh, a good number of startups uh, uh, raising funds through a small cap board in the uh, coming year. From Venture Capital and Private Equity Association, we actually organize uh, uh, We'll, we'll be organizing Startup World Cup for, for the second year. It's going to be held in February 8. And the winner of a Startup World Cup will be participating in uh, Silicon Valley, the largest startup competition. The winner of that competition will get a $1 million investment money. Uh, the founder of uh, Apple, Steve Ozniak, uh, the founder of uh, Sun Microsystems, uh, Vinod Khosla, they all are participating and supporting those startups. And I, I, I would uh, welcome uh, BIDA, the WBF, and uh, Daffodil to also join us and uh, be a part of this uh, largest global startup competition. And thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bebers, for inviting us to join the February 18 um, startup competition in uh, Turkey. So we'll probably, uh, together, uh, uh, partnering with government, Daffodil, and our association will be uh, forming a jury, and then we will be happy to nominate one company, at least uh, from uh, regular startups, and one from the impact uh, uh, startup to participate in, in your event in uh, February. I represent a global company called uh, Pegasus Tech Ventures. It's a $1 billion fund. We have investments in more than 15 countries and investments uh, and offices in uh, eight countries. In Bangladesh, we had uh, six investments, including uh, Shahosh.com, uh, Ashket Deal, Bagdoom, uh, a pre-IPO company called Digicon. And I must tell you, with our investments all over the world, our IRR is one of the highest in Bangladesh, and that proves the case to invest more in our country. I also founded a software company called E-Generation. So as Daffodil is one of the pioneers in going to IPO, through Daffodil Computers, and ours is one of the uh, first pure software company which has filed for IPO, and we also got um, permission from CSE and waiting for uh, uh, 
uh, permission from Security Exchange Commission. I would like to say, I was seeing how Sovur Khan Bhai was, you know, taking topics and, you know, I probably he's a idea generating machine. So he gave some really good, good suggestions where uh, we can work together with BIDA, WBF, uh, Daffodil, and Venture Capital Association. We really need to uh, work on the crowdfunding policy, which is stuck for a long time. You know, with angel investments, you know, with the small cap board, we have some policies for qualified investors, but we have to take it to a different level to get that awareness uh, for investments. Recently, the government of Bangladesh invested 100 crore taka through the IDEA uh, startup uh, uh, program where there is matching fund. You know, if a foreign investor or local investor invests uh, $1 million, the government will have a matching fund investment. So that is already there. Similarly, um, as uh, uh, our one of our colleague Marubo is saying that from the Venture Capital Association, we have convinced the government to withdraw the uh, tax for the uh, fund managers. We have convinced the government to take off 2% stamp duty for the funds. And we are working with the government to withdraw the tax for limited partners. So that will bring the, if you can withdraw the tax for the limited partners and the um, other investors. So that will give a big boost. In conclusion, we are looking forward to closely work with both BDA, WBF uh, to build the startup community in Bangladesh. And this collaboration, which you know we start starting today, you know with the uh, support of Daffodil Group and the in initiative of Sobur Khan Bai, I think this will be a shining example for the rest of the developing and emerging countries of the world. Thank you very much. As you know, investment development is one of the ten special initiatives of our Honorable Prime Minister. Uh, in fact, it's a, a part of the uh, uh, election uh, manifesto of the government. This serves as evidence of the top priority assigned to investment development by our government. As the Apex Investment Promotion Agency of Bangladesh, one of BIDA's objectives is to decentralize investment promotion activities and provide vital investment services in every part of our country. We not only want to promote regional investment opportunities, but we also want to encourage the spirit of entrepreneurship across Bangladesh. We understand that if we truly want a nation of startups and entrepreneurs who can create value for themselves and others, we will have to connect foreign capital to local capital. We have to create relations, relationships uh, through which global knowledge can be transferred to our youth. So the flexible model in which an angel investor operates is very ideal for the young people of Bangladesh, those who are brave, honest, industrious, and highly adaptive to new knowledge and technologies, those who deserve opportunities in the form of credit and mature guidance. Uh, there are around 2 million Bangladeshi youths who are entering the workforce every year. But we want our youths to move away from this job-seeking behavior, as I mentioned in, uh, before. Rather, we want to educate our youths to become job creators, because that is the kind of nation we have to be if we want to realize our development targets. Perhaps you know about our dream trajectory. We want to become uh, a middle-income country by 2024, and by 2030, we want to achieve the uh, Sustainable Development Goals, and it has been declared that we want to be a developed country in uh, South Asia by 2041. And by 2071, uh, during the centenary of our nation, we want to be a happy country. And we have the Delta Plan uh, of 2100. So 
in fact, to realize these goals, to reach these targets, if we just want jobs from uh, the existing companies, maybe it will be just a dream. To achieve those targets, we have to have uh, something else other than seeking jobs, and that is entrepreneurship. And to uh, realize this entrepreneurship uh, deal, in fact, we need financing. And yes, uh, this angel investment, um, uh, I would rather say it's a sort of theme that can be uh, of uh, use to these startup uh, uh, businesses. In BIDA, in fact, uh, we have um, uh, undertaken one project also. We call this Entrepreneurship and Skill Development Project. And under this project, in fact, we are uh, providing training to 24,000 young men and women across the country. And our aim is to uh, find at least, uh, even if it is 10% of this 24,000, it will be 2,400 entrepreneurs uh, with uh, new ideas and, uh, um, and uh, also uh, they are young and they are courageous and they are industrious. They will be uh, our uh, future entrepreneurs, in fact. And we need to support them uh, with uh, not only financing, uh, with uh, the knowledge, with the skill that you have talked about, the incubation, and also what we call uh, the uh, mentorship. In fact, the training is uh, designed in such a way that they will attend, in fact, they are attending. They're attending uh, 15 days classroom training in which basic skills are being uh, developed as to how someone will start business. The basics of business uh, is uh, informed. And then they are, uh, in fact, uh, tagged with some of the established business people uh, in the district, in Dhaka also, in, 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 in the district headquarters, uh, so that they can uh, uh, mentor them, they can guide them uh, how actually the business runs. It is not the uh, classroom, um, uh, in fact, scenario that business really uh, works. It's diff different, so they know the actual uh, skill, how to develop a business. And they, they are also asked to uh, develop a business uh, plan. Uh, and um, uh, the, the mentor, in fact, uh, guides him how to develop this business plan. And with that business plan, in fact, uh, what we are now trying, we will uh, also make uh, some arrangement uh, with the financiers. Um, we had planned one meeting last week, but uh, ultimately it has to be uh, cancelled. Now we are uh, thinking uh, for another meeting and another date uh, so that we can make some arrangement for financing also. So uh, this idea of angel in investment for these uh, young men and women entrepreneurs will be a good source of financing, I believe. The government of Bangladesh has repeatedly recognized that we have to diversify our, our investment and explore new sectors. New sectors that are not labor intensive, but rather based in knowledge and technology. So we must use our knowledge and be part of a risk investment ecosystem. That's what Mr. Shamim was telling. In fact, uh, the new startups are mostly based on um, uh, uh, digital technology, uh, and, and the, all these smart people are coming up. That's, uh, that's the uh, good news for Bangladesh, I, I believe. We welcome your suggestions. We invite you to play a role in startup funding ecosystem. We encourage more and more angel investment forum or consortium to come to Bangladesh and engage with our young entrepreneurs. Also, I heard before I uh, came here, my uh, private sector, he was uh, telling me that uh, last year there was uh, uh, a uh, program like this and 
th there is one network already established of the uh, uh, angel investors in Bangladesh. You are representing that. Uh, congratulations. Okay. Before I finish, uh, please allow me to express my uh, profound gratitude to the Daffodil family for bringing all of us together. Uh, I, wish, I wish you all great success. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Dear, dear Chairman, thank you very much for your kind words. Um, I see that you were very interested in this startup zone idea. Uh, we are going to announce the implementing startup zone, the first startup zone in Istanbul on 17th uh, of February in the grand opening ceremony with the president of the World uh, Free Zones uh, Association. Mm -hmm. So I am uh, proposing now if you propose one of the startup zones, uh, uh, one of the economic zones who is eligible or who is interested in uh, taking a role to be the first Star, uh, incubating the first startup zone in the world, then Bangladesh uh, can be announced in the grand opening as the first country, and it will be great honor for me and uh, to carry this to the board of uh, FEMONZA. Thank you all for participating, and I would like to start with our chief guest, Mr. Sirajul Islam, Executive Director of Bangladesh Investment Development Authority. You saw how positive he was and how much he interested he is. And I hope these ideas move forward, especially the startup e-zone. And um, next, I would like to thank our uh, guest of honor, Mr. Shamim Hassan, Chairman E-Generation, for his uh, good statistics and ideas. Then I would like to thank Mr. Babers for coming all this way with your ideas and I hope the discussion stimulated interest in supporting and developing the startup system in Bangladesh and we would like to use your experience of how to do it and I particularly like the idea of matching fund because we need to create ownership of uh, amongst the stakeholders <laughs> of developing the uh, startups. So matching fund is good, but one of the things is the, the market. So in Bangladesh, you know, trust and quality of products and things like that is sometimes a problem. So if the, you know, like supply chain, if the market is bought, you know, the products are bought by the big players, then there's a stake in it and they can support. And uh, thank you. And I would then, like to thank Mr. Mohamed Sabur Khan for his dynamic uh, vision and pushing us forward and getting t together all of us here. And I would like to thank all the people from industry for coming and participating. And I hope we all are going away with new ideas to support our startups. And I'd like to see that we m make these into projects uh, and strategic partnerships coming from this round table. Thank you all.